Hello there. Welcome to HPC Education. Today we are going to be talking about some OpenMP functions. We divide these functions and data types into three main categories. Environment execution, log and timing routines. Now let's go through a few C++ examples that use these functions. This program uses two functions, OMP get thread num and OMP get num threads. OMP get thread num returns the ID of the thread that's currently running. OMP get num threads returns the total number of threads that's running in the parallel region. The output of this code would be, so as you can see here, the total number of threads that are running are four and the next four lines show the ID of the thread that's running. Please note that the ID of a thread generally starts from zero. This program makes use of lock functions. So as you can see in the fourth line, OMP nest lock T is a data type. This data type holds the status of a lock, whether lock is available or if a thread owns a lock. And inside the test function, in the seventh line, we have a function OMP get thread num. We've already seen this function in the previous program. And the eighth line has OMP set nest lock. This function blocks thread execution until a lock is available. OMP unset nest lock releases a lock. In line number 15, OMP init nest lock. This function initializes a simple lock. So now let's just get into the main function. We can see a for loop. So assume i is equal to 0. So if i module 3, so if i is equal to 0, i module 3 would be 0. So it doesn't get into the if block. Now i is equal to 1. i module 3 is equal to 1. So it gets into the if block and then it calls the test function. So when it calls the test function, it sets the nest lock and then it prints the two lines that is line number 9 and line number 10 and then it unsets the lock. This is the output. So what I was talking about was just an example. So as you can see, the first two lines are the output, thread 1 and thread 2. First, it set the nest lock and then it unset the nest lock. This function uses OMP in parallel. This returns non-zero if called within a parallel region, else it returns zero. Now as you can see in the output, the first line is zero. So in line number seven, it's not running in any parallel region, so it returns zero. But in line number 12, it's pretty obvious that this function is running in a parallel region and hence it returns a non-zero value. OMP get num prox. Prox refers to processors. This function returns the number of processors that are available when the function is being called. When I ran it on my system, this is the output that I got. So, the output depends on your system. It could be 2, it could be 3, depending on the number of processors that are currently running. Now we have a few other functions. We'll just talk about it. OMP set dynamic. This function indicates that the number of threads available in upcoming parallel regions can be adjusted by the runtime. OMP get max threads. This function returns an integer that is equal to or greater than the number of threads that would be available if a parallel region without num threads were defined at that point in the code. OMP set nested enables nested parallelism. OMP test lock. This function attempts to set a lock but doesn't block thread execution. OMP get w time. This function is an example of time execution. So, it returns a value in seconds of the time elapsed from some point. OMP get w tick. 
This function returns the number of seconds between processor clock ticks. That's all for this video.